before we get started, there should be a little discussion about the difference between a POP3 account and an IMAP account. And that the world has changed. IMAP uh, is now the way, the way to go, uh, where it synchronizes your mail, where instead of POP3, where they just move from uh, one PC to one server, and you don't necessarily see them in all your other connected devices. Uh, for example, if you're on your desktop PC, and you want to uh, send an email out, it goes to your POP3, and it goes over to their, either POP3 or IMAP on that end, who cares? But the point of it is you want to send an email out, you simply go to your PC and you create an email, and you say, oh, send it out to this person, it goes out and goes to that mail server out there. Now, those other devices, the laptop, the tablet, and the smartphone, have no idea that that email went out. There's no synchronization going on. It only goes out that direction. So it depends upon what device you use here to send it out. The other devices have no idea. So the next time you're looking at your account through a different device, you may not see the same emails. And that's an important distinction between the two types of accounts. So if we take a look at the mail traveling over here going to the other person's server, they get it. And they could be on a pop on an IMAP too, but you don't really care as long as they get your email and they respond to it. And when they respond back, it comes back to the servers back over here. But it only goes here to whatever you pull it from. It could be the desktop PC here. It could be the laptop or the tablet. It does not go to all of them. Now, there is a way that, it, that they are stored for seven days on your server, depending upon your settings on your desktop PC. Uh, and maybe your smartphone tablet say don't ever delete, but the point of it is they're not synchronized So responses back and back and forth. They're just not always there when the same on all the devices So what we want to do is have put this over to an IMAP account so that when you respond from any one of these devices it, it goes back to your IMAP server over here and it gets synchronized with those other devices when they connect So all your folders and all that now your phone doesn't do all the folders But those are the most important ones But the point is you see every single important email that you want to see uh, Over there, so that's why you need to convert to an IMAP account Now you can do this one of two ways you can have it uh, already set up that way Which is great you can if you are if you have a pop 3 account you can contact the people and uh, change over uh, to a IMAP account. If you can't do that, you may want to establish a new one. I recommend doing that. I recommend going out to Outlook and going get in a new Outlook account. For example, you might have, let's say John Smith is your name and you want to put out everybody in the world, John Smith. You may not be John Smith 2005. You may find out that you want to put J.B.Smith or something like that. Find one that works for you that is easy for uh, you to remember and it's not uh, some cryptic number. Uh, do that, get that account. Then notify, once you have that account and, and create it and you install that with your Windows Mail, go out to all the different banks and organizations that you're getting email with your old account and watch them come in, go out to all those and change and get off of that because eventually there will be no more uh, maybe Verizon email or whatever email. You need to get into a generic email that's gonna last for now, not everything lasts forever. Uh, everything gets bought up. However, I think Outlook and Gmail are probably going to be uh, two of the ones you want to stay with. Uh, I'm sure there's one for Apple as well. Uh, anyways, the point being is that you want to convert over and get over to something where, let's say you move anyways, and you're no longer with Verizon. you got to change your email address. Or, like I said, this guy's on spcglobal.net. You want to get on an email that doesn't make a difference where you're at. Don't accept the default one from your provider. Go get yourself an email address from a free one from Outlook. You get all stuff, all sorts of stuff. You get OneDrive, you get seven gigs of storage, maybe more now. Uh, all sorts of stuff. They're competing to get your business. So go out there and get it. It's a great uh, feature in having uh, synchronized mail. So let's uh, let's talk about it now. Uh, since you can't have synchronized mail on this one account because it's a POP3, and you're going to have to import all your stuff, and uh, then you're going to switch over to your new email account. So let's try that. So now it comes in to prepare. First of all, you determine what you have, convert it or get a new one, notify your family, friends, and businesses, and get rid of it. Log in all the websites, change your contact information, do all that. You're going to keep your old address for a while so that you make sure that uh, if you can still get emails in it, they'll still come in and say, oh, yeah, I have to change that one. So after they're all done, or at least most of them, then we're going to do the import, which is what we're going to cover later in this video. Uh, wait a few more weeks for any more. When you're satisfied that you've got all the banks covered, all the whoever covered with your new email, your healthcare guy, your doctor, whoever has your old email address, then you can go ahead and get rid of your old account and exclusively lose, use your new account. So uh, let's go take a look. Here we are. We're in. This is my uh, live mail account that I'm going to get rid of. I'm no longer going to use. I've already gotten rid of all this stuff. Uh, delete all the extra stuff. I didn't get rid of my deleted by accident, but. Uh, you should get rid of any junk and deleted stuff. 
uh, and go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and do the import. Now, in order to do that, we're going to go over here to the mail application, which you see here we already have. I have other accounts, but we want to go to this other account here. When you click on that, and it goes in here, it gives you two choices, Exchange Active Sync and IMAP, and you can't use POP3, like we said earlier. But see this link down here to learn about using other account types with mail. It brings up Microsoft's website where we can go through this and learn about POP3. And you see it says right here, using that. And it says here, the mail which comes with Windows 8.1 and RT01 does not support emails that use POP3 protocol. So that's the older, non-synchronized one, like it tells here, just like I said about in the uh, intro. So if you want to do keep your current account name, then you can, like I said, go to your email provider and see if you can change your account to IMAP. And if they can, go ahead. What they're going to do is they'll have you download all your emails and then they'll delete your account and recreate it on an IMAP server and you just connect back up and you're fine. They may charge you more. So, uh, but it's great for multi-connections, you know, whether you're on your phone, you know, a tablet or whatever you want. You want to check your emails all the time. So anyways, you want to check, check all that with your provider, your current provider. I, can, I recommend to get rid of it and switch to a generic one called, you know, like an Outlook or a Gmail account. So let's talk about how we're going to do that. We're going to have a, that account. But we're going to import all that old live mail because eventually live mail is going away too. Microsoft already looks like they're going to get rid of that too, I would imagine. Uh, they're not going to update it forever. They want you to go to mail. So let's do this. And how do you do this when you can do it using Outlook? Well, that's what this covers. So this is, by the way, you can go out and get another Outlook client. You can use Outlook itself and have multiple connections to IMAP or POP and all that. But this is just to use Windows Mail with uh, the POP account. So you can download an app that does another app. But if you want them all in the same place and just be able to easily switch between accounts, that's what we're here for. So let's talk about it. So if you're willing to, if you want to use a Mail app and are willing to switch to account, that's what I talked about, changing that. So that's what they're recommending here. So. You want to make sure that all your emails are saved on your live account. You've logged in and pulled all your emails. So, and once you have your new account and everything, you're ready to go. So, you're going to go ahead and use this mail migration uh, wizard. Okay, that's the mail migration we're going to do uh, right now to bring in all your old live mail emails. So, with that, let's go ahead and we're going to click on the ma uh, mail migration. But first, here's my email account. I already got it set up. I've been using it for a while. I've notified all my banks. I'm starting to get emails there. I'm ready to migrate my old mail from live mail. I'm going to get rid of using my live mail. Uh, this tells you what it's doing, exactly what we're talking about. It even goes back from all, uh, Outlook Express. So you can put it into Outlook.com. Uh, unfortunately, it only runs with the 32-bit version of Internet Explorer. The Windows 8 one is a 64-bit. So we're going to click on that. And it's just going to open it up here at the desktop. And here we are. And this will run through the import. And it's found my found on this PC. It it found my uh, installation of Live Mail. So it's going to go ahead and we're going to choose what to import. You could have multiple email addresses here, whatever. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do the import. So uh, when we do that, we're just going to click on the import uh, button here, and it's going to start preparing the import. Now this took quite a bit of time. At first, it ran through the first few hundred, and then it slowed down really long. But do not close this page during the import. Let it run. I'm cutting out some of the time lag and everything, but uh, just let it run. Uh, it may take you 10, 15, 20 minutes. I don't know on the different levels of email, but for 534, it took about a good five, six minutes. So it's going to go ahead and finish this import here. And you'll see at the end, it's going to give you a report of was it successful or not. Uh, and now it's going to add accounts. So it takes a while for it to add accounts as well. I, I, wanna, I skipped past a little bit of this as well. But then it comes up, and there it is. Uh, does it does what happened? Oh, I'm I'm I missed one. I'm not going to worry about it. You may or have better worse luck than I have. I'm not sure, but uh, it's no big deal because I already transferred most of my stuff. So let's go to the inbox. So we're going to go back over here to the regular the new application and take a look at where your emails ended up. And you look over here in their folders, and you'll see there they are down here. It imported all the for even my deleted items down there. Now, I've added a shortcut up here to the inbox up here, but you're going to find out they're not going to come in here at this inbox here. Your emails are not going to arrive in your regular inbox. Just uh, there. You don't have to go get them out of the imported folder because that's only imported emails. I even did a test. It did not come in here. It did not come in there. It came in at the real inbox up top. 
So, and then I did a reply and did the same thing. So that's where, how it was going to work from now on. You never have to go back to live mail. You can just go in here and get your emails here and you can send uh, back out from here and respond from your other old email address. And at some future date and time when you no longer need your old email address, you simply delete it and you're done. And then you'll have your historical records here of all your emails and things like that uh, from that account. So take a take a moment of time to go establish that new Outlook account and then import all your stuff over from Live Mail because it's a it's a way going forward better more connected uh, applications as far as being able to sync between your your phone and your tablet and things like that and you'll be much happier. It takes a little bit of use and use to it, but you should and should enjoy your mail in Windows 8. And don't forget to subscribe to Old Guy Geek. Have uh, hundreds of videos out there, and we're adding more every day.